This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to Georgia, where a 44-year-old immigrant from Mexico died last week at Stewart Detention Center, one of the largest immigration jails in the United States, and one that has been plagued by allegations of neglect and abuse for years. Pedro Ariago Santoya was the fourth person to die at Stewart in just two years, and the seventh person to die while in the custody of Immigration and Customs Enforcement since October. An immigration judge had ordered Ariago Santoya to be deported reported in June. Instead, he was transferred to Stewart on July 10th, as his removal proceedings continued. Two weeks later, he was pronounced dead at a Georgia hospital. He had complained of abdominal pain and later went into cardiac arrest. Last year, federal records obtained by the Atlanta public radio station WABE and Reveal from the Center for Investigative Reporting unveiled serious issues at Stewart, including chronic shortages of medical and other staff, drug smuggling and long-term use of solitary confinement. In the documents, the facility's conditions were described by some staff as, quote, a ticking time bomb. Between May 2017 and July 2018, three immigrants died while detained at Stewart, a private immigration jail owned by the Mega Corporation Core Civic. For more, we go to Atlanta, Georgia, where we're joined by Azadeh Shashahani, legal and Ad advocacy director at Project South, former president of the National Lawyers Guild. Project South currently involved in three class action lawsuits against Stewart and Core Civic. Azadeh, thank you so much for joining us. Start off by telling us about Pedro Ariaga Santoya, what happened to him, and then how this fits into a bigger picture. Thank you very much for having me. So there is not a whole lot of information available at this point about um, the death of Mr. Ariago Santayo. All we have is the press statement that ICE put out that um, a lot of media outlets are um, unfortunately relying on, um, which is really a mistake in um, light of the pattern of ICE lies um, when it comes to abuse and deaths of immigrants. Um, at immigration detention centers, including a steward. Um, what we do know is that he, um, you know, complained of um, pain and medical issues, and at some point he was transferred to a hospital. But um, what led to um, the medical issues that he experienced is something that um, we still um, do not know, and um, you know, we hope <laughs> and very much demand. Um, an independent investigation into the circumstances of this death, um, as well as the three other deaths that have happened um, at the Stewart Detention Center, two of them by suicide, where men with mental health issues were placed in solitary confinement for prolonged periods. Um, in one case, a 27-year-old Giancarlo Jimenez Joseph was left in solitary um, for 19 days before he hung himself. And then, um, you know, very similar circumstances, Efrain De La Rosa, a 40-year-old man, was held in solitary confinement for 21 days. Um, he also had mental health issues, and he hung himself as well. Could you talk about the uh, the record at Stewart? There was a report back in May of 2017 by Project South and the Penn State Law Center for Immigrant, uh, Immigrant Rights Clinic, uh, which uh, detailed the testimonies of people who had been uh, uh, detained there. Uh, what is that record? It's a horrible record. Um, you know, you have issues ranging from lack of adequate access to medical care to um, solitary confinement, people just complaining about their conditions of detainment are um, placed in solitary. Sometimes we're just, you know, talking back to the guards. To the issue of forced labor at this immigration detention center, which, as you mentioned, is um, operated by uh, one of the richest and the biggest, uh, the biggest prison corporation in the country. Um, you know, in, in the past, its revenues has, have been um, in the range of $178 million, and yet this prison corporation relies on the forced labor of detained immigrants and pays them between $1 to $4 a day. And it is very much forced labor, even though the government and the corporation claim um, it's voluntary. Um, we know for a fact that immigrants, including um, our plaintiff, Shaib Ahmed, in the class action lawsuit that we currently have pending against Core Civic, actually complained about not having been paid for a few days. You know, the meager pay that they were supposed to pay him 
um, which was, you know, $4 a day. They hadn't paid him for several days, and he said, okay, well, there's not going to be work tomorrow. And so for that, he was placed in solitary confinement for 10 days, where basically he only had um, an hour to shower um, every other day, and, um, you know, he was pl uh, um, held in a cell for th 23 hours a day. We are in touch with him. He has since been deported to Bangladesh, and he still continues to experience trauma from the experience he had at Stuart. You are one of the most vocal voices around this for-profit private detention center. Can you talk about what you're calling for now, and how has the situation changed under President Trump, Azadeh? Well, we have called for Stuart to be shut down uh, for about 10 years now, you know, since 2009, when Georgia Detention Watch, a coalition were involved with, put out the first report on the abuse of immigrants. We called for this detention center to be shut down. Um, our calls um, repeatedly went ignored. Um, you know, we had another death. Roberto Medina Martinez, a 39-year-old immigrant, died of a treatable heart infection in 2009. Still, the government did nothing. We put out this report, this most recent report, in 2017. ICE, you know, started talking to the media and saying that our report was false. And then people started dying. Um, you know, a few days later, Giancarlo Jimenez Joseph died of suicide. Um, after being placed in solitary. And, um, you know, we've had this really atrocious record of deaths just in the past two years, and I think um, it is, speaks to the atmosphere of impunity under this administration, where ICE, where core civic employees that run the facility, other entities that might be involved, feel a sense of impunity, that they're not going to be held accountable, regardless of how they treat detained immigrants at this isolated facility. They're putting them in solitary confinement, even those, for example, the two who committed suicide who suffered from schizophrenia? Yes, exactly. Where we know that, um, according to the U.N. Special Rapporteur on torture, placing people in solitary for any more than two weeks amounts to degradable and inhumane punishment. And ICE even itself has a strict rules for when people should be placed in solitary. So when a person is already suffering from mental health issues, um, definitely they should not be placed in solitary confinement, and yet they continue to do that when people complain about mental health issues instead of actually providing them with the care that they need. We have uh, less than a minute left, but what are local officials or leaders uh, there in the state uh, doing about this or have attempted to do? Well, um, you know, speaking out, we had a victory uh, back in uh, September of 2018, where the mayor of the city of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, finally um, decided to um, basically hold true to the rhetoric of Atlanta being a welcoming city and it stopped detaining immigrants at the Atlanta City Detention Center. Um, and now it looks like the jail is not going to be no more. Um, it might be turned into a community center, which is a really positive development. So that example um, is really hopeful. You know, we hope that officials at the state level, uh, congressional um, uh, representatives whom we have called on repeatedly, um, Project South was joined by 70 local and national organizations after our report came out in a letter to the Georgia congressional delegation. We have about 10 seconds. <laughs> asking them to initiate an investigation, and we continue to um, ask them to do so. We want to thank you so much for being with us. And, of course, we'll continue to investigate these stories. Azadeh Shashahani, a Legal and Advocacy Director for Project South, currently involved in a class action lawsuit against CoreCivic, which runs the Stewart Detention Facility, former president of National Lawyers Guild, and was the director of National Security and Immigrants' Rights Project for the ACLU of Georgia. Happy birthday to Jemiah Lewis.